Noel Fielding, Frank Lampard, Denise Van Outen and Meeple Bizzle. What a starting lineup we have for you tonight. The first name on my team sheet is the West Ham, Chelsea, Man City and England star who's a true footballing legend. That's right, the fabulous Frank Lampard will be up front tonight and on my sofa very shortly. My midfield dynamo is the mighty Bush star who's never afraid to stick the pixie boot in. Yes, the one and only. Noel Fieldy's in the house. Here's the babbled and blown striker who's on the verge of a shock transfer from the West End to Albert Square. Yes, East Enders newest signing. Denise Van Outer will be dropping by. <laughs> but before all that, oh my God, what a week it's been. <laughs> Prince Charles was accused of hypocrisy after telling everyone they need to watch the global footprint before jumping in a helicopter for a short trip to Ascot. <laughs> What's the problem? He's heir to the throne. What's he supposed to do? Sit in the back of a customised luxury Jaguar with cushion seats and air conditioning and get driven from his palace like an animal? <laughs> <laughs> the most surprising thing about this is that a man with a comb-over would risk a helicopter. <laughs> Charles, tell us about saving energy anyway. He wastes a couple of minutes before every sentence going... <laughs> Got to start him up like a strimmer. <laughs> Did you hear about the bloke who had 40 children with 20 different women? Did you see that in the paper? Yes. How much sex has this man had? <laughs> He said pushing a baby in a pram is a great way to pull. So if Jeremy Clarkson wants to cheer himself up, maybe he should get Richard Hammond a bonnet. <laughs> and finally, a report this week said that 99 out of 100 mums fail to recognise when their kid is overweight. <laughs> they need to look for the telltale signs. <laughs> like having to buy your kid's school uniform from Millets. <laughs> Little tip, a school blazer shouldn't come with pegs and a ground sheet. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm not... Listen. I'm not having... A, I'm not having a go. I, I was an overweight child. I was fat. Someone at school grabbed hold of me pigtails and used me as a space opera. <laughs> Now, the mighty Bush is now filled in. Wolford, New Girl, Denise Van Outen and the amazing Lethal Bizzle will all be here later. But first, let's kick off the show with one of the greatest footballers this country's ever produced. So go nuts, go wild for the one, the only, Frank Lampard! <laughs> I mean, how about that for a walk-on? I think we should have a replay of that. Do you see it? Oh, it's good, good one again. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> put his head up and he spotted the crowd, a little <laughs> shimmy of his right peg there, and he's left the stairs for dead. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hugged him. That's <laughs> got to be an early bar for the chatty man. Look at that. <laughs> right. Here, this summer, yeah, you're off to play for New York City Football Club. Yes. I saw in the paper Cheers. you and Christina are out hunting. Cheers. How'd it go? Cheers, love. Mm. Cool. Um. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. No? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. well, my head actually rotated 360 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> um. How'd it go? Yes, it went well, actually. Yeah. yeah. We looked at, we, well, we spent, I think, three or four days at international breaks. We didn't have a game. And um, two days looking around apartments. So it was, uh, it's an amazing city. I don't know if you know. Oh, New York. yeah, I love New York. Yeah, yeah, New York yeah. It's incredible. So we, um, we may have found somewhere, hopefully. I mean, you know, you're playing like for New York City. Do they have a chant? Is it, what like, is the chant? 
Um, they did chant a lot, actually. Yeah. yeah. They're, new they're very. You can see that they're very game. They're very keen to. Yeah. They've started a new club, so I think the club have worked really hard to get them into it. And you know, Americans like they're very positive behind the team yeah. and all that. And the game we watched wasn't particularly good. It was a funny game. It didn't play particularly well. But the fans are all very um, behind them. And then when a little something happens or a little bang or a little fight in the game, yeah. then they go crazy. So oh, right. massive deal. Or, in, or any shot from anywhere. Yeah. You know, they get really excited. Do you get there with the T-shirt on and the pie going, yeah, I can f*** you better than that, you know? <laughs> you get them? You, uh, I didn't see so many of them. I've, I've encountered loads of them, actually. I used to go back to... When I went back to West Ham, I remember a few years as I moved on, and they always called me fat, cos when I was a young kid, they oh, I'd... no, I can't believe I know, I had, I, but I used to have this round face, you know? I was 17, so, you know, you probably didn't know what to eat. Yeah, you right. lose that round face so, as you get older, like, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I, I went back and got called uh, Fat Frank for a few years, and uh, it was great. And then I remember one game particularly. I was I was near the Chicken Run, which is like the notorious part of West Ham, where they give you the, the yeah. biggest stick. And I looked, at, I went to take a call, and I looked up at this woman. She stood up <laughs> and called me, a f "You fat," <laughs> and everything. And I looked at her, and I thought, "My God, <laughs> you're telling I must be in trouble here if I've got you telling me." <laughs> <laughs> I got, it's honestly, and, I, and you know what? That was actually a bit of a. It sort of broke the ice for me. I thought, actually, what a load of rubbish this is, and it never bothered me again. No. So you've signed up to play for New York. Yes. Yeah, for two years. What happens after that? Um, well, I don't know yet. I mean, I'm in that. I'm sort of enjoying the, the back end of my career. It will be the last couple of years I play. So um, yeah, I would maybe do my coaching badges, whether which is a bit of a process. That's the two years worth of work to get that to maybe be a manager. But I'm not completely sure whether I want to go down that route or go down certain other routes. Uh, a bit of TV, maybe, but. Um, everybody's lining up to do that in a minute. That punditry thing is the thing yeah, to do. I know, Every yeah. player that retires wants to go in. And it's not an easy... It looks quite easy to talk on football, about football, but it's not that easy. Now, you've also been keeping yourself busy outside of football by writing children's books, isn't it? Yes. Now, your new one's called Frankie's Magic Football. Mm -hmm. Frankie's Kangaroo Caper. Caper. I loved it. I won't lie, I did struggle with some of the longer words. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who hasn't read one of your books, they're about a football mad kid, aren't yeah. they? Called Frankie and mm -hmm. his magic ball, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, in one of the books, yeah, a giant puppet takes Frankie to China, doesn't it? Mm. And then another, he plays football against some cowboys. And in this one, he's chasing kangaroos across uh, Australia. Mm. How much of it is based on your own life? <laughs> <laughs> I, I always get asked what, who's based on players and the people trying to extract that <laughs> bit of badness that you're going to tell some sort of hidden no. stories. But no, it's... Um, you know what it is? I think it was... Uh, the whole reason it started was I, was I got to the age in my football career where I wanted to do some different bits and I've got two girls at home and I was reading with them and I thought there's maybe a bit of an angle here to do something different. Yeah. Um, and I love the educational stuff, so I, that's why when they... Um, travel to Australia, they get involved with Ayers Rock, and I feel like I'm giving some information there and a sort of moral story as well. There's always like a moral issue that the gang has to overcome. So, because yeah. yeah. boys, boys don't read, young boys, and it's well, becoming this, a problem, isn't it? This is what I didn't realise. I actually started to, you know, to, to write the books just as a bit of fun and hopefully that, you know, hoping that children will read them. But the more I've got into it and I've got involved with certain charities, you realise that particularly boys don't don't read. The percentages no. are re really bad, and and I get that because it's the modern day, and you know, there's so much, so many other things to do. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a good cause. I've kind of actually linked that in a lot now with the charity work with it, just to try and you know, get boys and girls to read more because of what a, what a start-up can give you in life if you're reading at that age. There'll be jokers on Twitter, obviously, going, yeah, how can he write a book? He probably can't even read a <laughs> book. You know what Twitter's like. <laughs> <laughs> does that perception of football... Is it does a bit, actually. It does. I think it's... Um, you do, you do find that over the years, particularly, you kind of get... Because you meet lots of... You know, I've been in loads of dressing rooms with lots of different players, and I, I think it's a complete... Um, you know, it's like broad society, really. You go into a bank, you go into the back here, or you go into the audience, you meet different levels, different types of people. Of course, people, yeah. Different yeah. interests, and funny enough, footballers have been tainted with this brush yeah. of being thick. Um, you know, there are some that aren't the smartest. <laughs> you know, well, you know, but, yeah. But there are some very smart ones as well. You, you've got 11 GCSEs, mm -hmm. and listen to this, he knows Latin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard time you still love. Um, <laughs> do you want an orange? <laughs> <laughs> i have to take one. Yeah, you can take one, take one. It's good, yeah. Get your energy up. Thank you. I haven't done that since about 14. Oh, I've come up in my mouth. <laughs> Do you need your magic sponge? 
Now, you know this magic sponge, yeah. does it actually work? <laughs> no, you know when you see them like, oh no, on the floor like that, and then yeah. someone comes out. Well, sometimes they're not injured in the first place would probably be the problem. Yeah, there. yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. pretending. But um, no, I think it's the, um, that's old school, that, isn't it? But that's the cold water and the sort of numb it and give it a rub. And it's the, it's the mind game. I'm telling you, it's a rub it for 10 seconds. Uh, do you ever get like a dirty physio or something? Like, you know, when they go, wait a minute, it's me ankle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you ever I'm get, wait a minute, you're not even a trained professional. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I bet it happens. I bet it does. I met some really dirty physios, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do it on the pitch of you like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, like, what's yeah, going on? Like okay, we're off again, Frank. It's all still to play for in this half, okay? <laughs> this is really your last season in mm -hmm. England. Mm -hmm. Then you're going out on a high. He is. I mean, what a career. Look at this. You've played a thousand games for your club and your country. You're Chelsea's all time top scorer with 211 goals. <laughs> You won everything going, including three Premier League titles, four FA Cups, three League Cups, the Champions League and the Europa League, although that's a bit of a <laughs> one, so it don't really count. <laughs> <laughs> and you've played 106 times for England. <laughs> what, what's your personal eye like? Uh, winning the Champions League. Really? Yeah, without a doubt. It was... Um, <laughs> it was lovely. Chelsea fan, then. Now, we had... Um, but the minute we won it, I think we celebrated on the pitch for an hour. We celebrated through the night for the next two or three days. And then, yeah, I mean, I, I, I took it too far because about three or four <laughs> days later, I was, in the, I was on the sofa at home and, and I was struggling a little bit. And Christine said to me, Frank, you need to stop celebrating this now. <laughs> 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 you need to get on with life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, yeah, we made the most out of it, but it was. It was an amazing night, and the Champions League is, uh, is the most incredible uh, thing to win as a footballer, I think. Um, you were like a god to the Chelsea fans, weren't you? How was it for you when you went to Man City? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Back off! Back off! Um, no, it, it was fine. I mean, I, um, I had 13 years at Chelsea. It was incredible, and I'll, I'll always be a Chelsea boy. I mean, that's... You know, because I played and there were so many memories of the place and stuff. But um, I think, you know, they decided it was time to move on. And uh, there was no way at 35, I was at the time, nearly 36, I was ever going to sort of fight that. You know, you get told to move on, you move on. That can yeah. happen to everyone. And, uh, and then Manchester City came in for me at a later date, having signed for New York. And I, it was one of those where I thought, is this the right choice for me? Um, and it was kind of too good to turn down. At 36, not many players get asked to go and play at the Champions uh, of England at the time for... Um, for five months, what it would have been at the time, and I just thought it was a great experience. And I, I've got such a good relationship with the Chelsea fans; it doesn't, it hasn't broken it. I'm there no. for a short term now, and I think I, I've still got you know my main house in Chelsea. I go back to London a lot, and they're, they're great. And yeah, I, I yeah. hope I never lose. I'm sure I won't. No, I mean you won everything going uh, with Chelsea, didn't you? But does it <laughs> didn't win anything with England? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean we did yeah. really well, didn't we, in qualifying? But then it all goes. <laughs> you know what? It, it, you know, I mean, it great players there, but we just can't. You know. No, I don't know why. There's probably reasons why. I think we um, we didn't gel as much as we should have done. Because I think when you look at the individuals in that, those pictures, you know, you're talking about some of the, the best individuals in world football at different times, yeah. and we've had them, and we haven't quite done it. I mean, there's, there's a huge amount of pressure of England. Yeah. And uh, maybe we haven't always handled that very well, the expectations level. But, you know, we could, that can't yeah, be Yeah, but excuse. you say that, though. Yeah, you can't say it all, because they go, oh, that you fans expect too much. I mean, you can't yeah. have a go of putting up some bunting and getting an England shirt. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I baked the cake and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon football will ever come home? Yeah, yeah. Do you reckon it will? Yeah! I'm, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. I feel like putting up some, like, posters or something. Come home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I've got to ask you this. Do you think there will ever see a gay footballer? Because statistically, there should be loads. One in ten are gay, aren't they? <laughs> gay. <laughs> gay. <laughs> gay. Yes, you, madam. Gay. <laughs> You're a gay man. <laughs> no, come on. 50,000 well, professional footballers. One of them must be a bit. Oh, hello. I think <laughs> a lot of that problem, as you say, is the fact that, that, that will be out there yeah. as it is in modern, you know, all life, all times. But I think we are probably at fault as, um, as a sport. I think uh, it's... And 
it's like an old that old syndrome, you know, where it's a man's game and that's mm. not, you can't talk about that. And I have to say, the game's changing a lot. There's a lot of campaigns, there's a lot of things. I feel it in the dressing room, there's a different feel about it. So, yeah, there should be. And, mm. and I, I, would I would love it if, you know, that, that someone came out and, and, and everyone treated it with respect. You know, that, that silly thing about we're match and we play football, is, that's a very old hat. But yeah. the thing is, people, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The trouble is, people do come out as gay, these players, mm. but when they've retired, isn't it? It's like they stick their head back in the dressing room and go, by the way, I'm gay. And yeah. I've seen all your <laughs> Anyway, we talked about your amazing career, but the only thing you haven't won is the Alan Carr Chatty Man Trophy. <laughs> Come back late and see if you can lift the cup. <laughs> I, would, I would love to. Right love then, to. it's the deal. <laughs> good luck with the book. Good luck with the rest of the season. Good luck in New York. Give it up for Frank Lampard, everyone. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Frank. First, though, move over, Yvette. There's a new sexiest fielding in town from the mighty Bush and luxury comedy. It's now fielding. <laughs> I love your mic stand, it's amazing. I know, it's like it's been <laughs> or something, isn't it? I love it. <laughs> How Amazing. are you, anyway? Great, all the better for seeing because you had a cold last time. I know. How are you, look? Yeah! <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. come on, let's have a... Well, that's, a, that's an inviting colour. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like Castrol GTX. <laughs> it does! <laughs> wow. <laughs> Bow. Oh my god! Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> mmm. What is that? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> what is that taste? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Does it taste Thai? It almost like it's like someone's like interfering with yeah. you. <laughs> 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 That would be I've, I've gone into the future. <laughs> <laughs> Only four seconds. <laughs> oh, no, that, I can't sip that. Oh. Now, listen, we all know Noel the comedian. <laughs> we do, we do, but some of us don't know Noel the artist. <laughs> do you know he's an artist? Do you know he's had an exhibition at the Royal Albert Hall? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Woman manipulating her voice. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> but how, how does that happen? Did you ask them? Did they approach you? No, Tell I, me everything now. I just went there in the middle of the night and started putting paintings <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> um, yeah, they approached me. Uh, yeah, they approached me. Not in a, you know, not in that way. No. Um, <laughs> They jumped out from a, behind a bush and said, can you paint? And I went, no. And they went, right, you're having an exhibition in a month. <laughs> um, no, they just, uh, they approached, I've got an art dealer, and they approached her and said, would Noel like to do an exhibition in the Albert Hall? And I obviously said no immediately, because I thought, I can't do that. But then I sort of got my head around it and thought, well, no, it's quite an amazing venue. It's only 5,000 people that were going to see it, because it's the Royal Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was going to be pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> but it went all right. No, did you? it went all right, actually. It was really good. We've got to talk about your paintings. We've got a few here on the screen. Oh, OK, yeah. Now, I'm not just saying this, but I do love them. Oh, thank you. How would you describe your style? What's that? Uh, um, I think that's called the <laughs> Cavalier. It's quite big, that one. Really? Yeah, it's huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at the <laughs> just got real. <laughs> It's all about the titles. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you know, I'm in the market for a bit of art, yeah. Right. So I asked people on Twitter to draw us, yeah. <laughs> to draw us two, me and yeah. you. Oh, God. They did some good ones. I mean, have a look at this. Let's see. <laughs> that is good. Don't you think so? I sort of look better than I do in real life there. <laughs> You're androgynous. I might take that to a plastic surgeon and go, can I look a... <laughs> maybe look a bit more like this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really good. That's really good. 
actually. I've seen the photo that they've done that from. That is really good. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about the oven gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very happy with mine. <laughs> That's not a mine, isn't it? <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but, I mean, listen, give me a chin. I mean, <laughs> it's like they got round the chin and thought, I can't be bothered with this. <laughs> I wasn't very happy with mine. So, is there anyone in the audience who fancies themselves as a bit of an artist that would like to draw me? <laughs> Try and come up with me, come on. Because you saw that Your last one, here. it was minging. Are you good? Can, can you draw? Are you a good drawer? <laughs> Hello. You give some... <laughs> You can sound. Anyone come on, can you want it Are you a good drawer? Are you good at drawing? <laughs> do you, what colour do you want? Be kind. Okay. Be kind. <laughs> okay, wanna... shall I go over this last to... section over here? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're standing up. You must be fing good at drawing. You... <laughs> <laughs> no tracing. <laughs> Don't make me look minging. <laughs> I will have you thrown out. <laughs> Well, we have the rest of the interview, and then I'll check them at the end to see how we look. So they don't get long, then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know it was watercolour challenge. <laughs> <laughs> we should bring it back, watercolour challenge. I did like that show. Haven't it was me? like you got him from school, didn't you? Not just yet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I nearly went back in. I know. <laughs> well, you idiot. To have some water, love. Now, you're doing more shows over here later this year. Yeah. For your tour. Yeah. Now, for anyone who missed it first time round, yes. Wagwan. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's for the people who didn't quite manage to get it to see it in time. It's like a little extra month of gigs, yeah. Yeah, Come yeah. Come along. Now, this weekend, you're heading down under, aren't you? Yeah. Is it your next leg for your tour? Yeah, I'm going to New uh, Australia and New Zealand. I'm a little bit scared because they have big... I don't like spiders. Oh, and, uh, they're massive over there. Yeah, I know. It's a nightmare. Because there was a spider when I went to Melbourne last time. Me and my brother were there, and there was a spider in the room, and it was massive. It was, like, this big, mm. right? And I said, I'll go and get something to trap it under. But, you know, usually you do, like, a cuff and a postcard. Well, it's yeah. too big for that. <laughs> so I had to get oh. a mixing bowl, right? <laughs> Record, right? <laughs> what I didn't realise is that the mixing bowl, it was, like, a, it was glass, really thick glass. It sort of magnified the spider. <laughs> Put it over the top, and it, it was about that big in the end. And I was like, oh! And then we were in the lift, right, with it like that. Oh. And we showed the concierge, and he just went, hey! And ran out. Oh, and this is a oh. um, mother's life. I put it outside the hotel, and it didn't even go in the bushes. It went down the pavement, and then across the sort of across the road, oh. like it was a man. Then it hailed. <laughs> in the Abbey Road cover. And then it just hailed a taxi and went uh, off. Oh, God. It's massive. Yeah, you know what, as well, you've got to be careful. Have you heard, you know, like, crocodiles and stuff? Yeah, I'm probably... People have been taking the crocodiles' signs from the trees right. as souvenirs. Right. And people have been going in the bloody rivers. Have you heard about this? <laughs> you don't take a beware crocodile sign <laughs> as a souvenir, do you? <laughs> <laughs> That's really and it? That is Oh, I love that. I am <laughs> not going... I can tell you now, I will be not going in a river in the outback. No, no chance. No, no definitely not. Right, well, now, how are we getting on with these drawings? Shall we have a look and see what they are? Well, we haven't given him much time, but... Oh, look at the concentration on his face. Look at it. This guy's good, I think. Okay. Wow. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, look! No. <laughs> is that me? Yeah, yeah it is. No, no. That's that's uncanny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so what inspired that? It's like my passport the photograph. The hair. Yeah. The hair. I've got the spikes and the... yeah, it's pretty good. And, and this is Alan, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's just show everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Someone off the Guess Who board. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful, that, yes. <laughs> and I could make it into a, a mouse match or a um, t shirt, a jigsaw. How are you getting on? Wow. Oh, look, hey, look at this. Oh, <laughs> that is wow. nice. You've uh, raised are, the are stakes. You a, yeah, are you a professional? <laughs> no, I'm Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Spider. Even on drawings, they have to put a spider in. <laughs> you were actually That's pretty good, actually. But she was listening to our conversation and adding bits. Like a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Now go and check that person okay. over there, love. Keep those for the gallery. Yes, yes. We'll sell them later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a really good one over here. Oh, let's have a look. Sort of progressive style. Oh, let's have a look. Edgy. It's got a subtext. Oh, oh my God, look at that. That's moody and <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Look at that, that's I love that's that. That's pretty Oops. good. Oh, wow. Oh, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Let's have a look now. Now, what what's up the f is that supposed to be? <laughs> so, what's that one? Now, listen, so who should we, uh, who do you reckon should win? Um, I think that's the one. That isn't one, it? that one's the winner. <laughs> well, <that's fine. laughs> oh. So many talented people in the audience. I know. <laughs> They're all beautiful in their own way. They are. <laughs> well, good luck with the tour and have a fantastic time in Australia. OK. Well, and send us a postcard. And thanks for having me again. Oh. Thanks for the drink. Oh, no, you lying <laughs> <b***h>. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, everyone! Frank Lampard will be taking me on in a penalty shootout and I'll be fester skanking with lethal bizzle. That's all later. But first, though, she's the blonde bombshell who's all set to bring the explosive storylines to Albert Square. Watch out, there's a new dirty den in town. <laughs> Give it up for Denise Van <laughs> <Lampard>. <laughs> Last time on, you, you revealed you had a bit of a crush on me. I did. I'm over that one now. <laughs> oh, so soon. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a bit of a crush yeah, on you. Yeah, I know. What was that well, with I just you? like funny men. Oh, well, love. You've got good bants. Oh, I like that. Did you see that? Yeah. He has, not he? Oh, well, that's very sweet. But we've got to talk about EastEnders. I've heard rumours... But a cockney little sparrow, not a million miles away from here, <laughs> is going to Albert Square. Is this true? This is true. <laughs> oh, my God. So tell me what's happened there. Because you, you've been offered parts in EastEnders before and you said no. Would you want to, rent to play the new landlady? No, well, no. I've been... I can't say which parts, because other people are playing them, so that's not fair. So, you know, so I've been offered parts before, but for various reasons, either, yeah. like, if I was doing theatre shows and I was locked into a contract, also I was pregnant, and then when my daughter was a baby, it was just I couldn't work the hours. Yeah. And then the opportunity came up for this character, and the time felt right, the character's really fun, and she's a bit naughty, surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I thought she's going to go into the square and stir things up a little bit. So I just grabbed the chance to play her. Now, for years, actors got really snobby about soaps, didn't they? And then yeah. sort of there's been a turning point now, like Sir Ian McKellen and Corrie and Danny Dyer and stuff like that. What do you reckon's changed? Well, I just think, you know, the, the acting's so good. You only have to look at the EastEnders live episodes to see how brilliant it was. And they are the hardest working actors. And I, I do a lot of theatre, so to walk into something like that, where you literally have, you know, very little time to learn a script, you're often shooting scenes out of sequence, so it could be something really dramatic, and then, you know, you have to whiz over to another set for another episode. Yeah. They work so hard. I'd say they are the best actors, actually. I mean, how does it work? I mean, when you go into EastEnders, do you have any say on, on the character? Because say you go in there and you're a complete and everything because that means like for the next few years you've got people people do think soaps are real don't they yeah you go, they yeah do. look at her you cow and all that you've got to put up with people being a bit true well i think they, and they you know what i mean they do don't yeah they? i said if i was ever going to do it the two sort of you know um personas you can have really is, is to be the or to be a bit of a bit of yeah yeah and i chose to be a bit of Oh <laughs> no, because you want to be like yeah, you, you want, want a something... juicy character. Well, you, you can know, have a bit of fun with. You know, yeah. she's just she's a businesswoman, and she's um, yeah, she really does shake things up in the square. Oh god! And there's a bit of history there with Phil Mitchell, so which I can't oh. reveal too much, but yeah, there's definitely going to be uh, fireworks. Oh, and what's your house like? Is it nice? Or is it because it's a bit dingy, aren't they? Some of the houses and that. Yeah, they are. Do you know what well, at the moment, like? I haven't spent any time in my own house. I'm in other people's houses. 
<laughs> so you're really <laughs> I mean, really? You just wander around? <laughs> no. I've never no, said no, that. Like a really... <laughs> now, I'm a bit worried about What you. are you worried about? Well, you know you go on these shows and there's very feisty, aren't they? There's a lot of slapping yeah. going on. You've been on stage now and you did Strictly and you've probably got a bit jazz Andy. Do you know what I mean? You're a bit like that. Do you reckon you could actually slap someone or do you reckon you'll be like, oh, darling, uh, Babe, meet you... me at the Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> you can take the girl out of Essex, but you can't take the Essex out of the girl. Really? Yeah. Because I, I, I actually don't think you'd be that good at slapping. Really? You know? no. Is that what you think? No, I don't think you've got it in you. You don't think no. I've got it in me? No, I think... Do you know who you're I dealing with? I think you'd with? like it in you, but I don't think you could... <gasps> <laughs> you hit me, you s. <laughs> <laughs> that looked realistic, did, did it? Did you or shall I do it again? Shall she hit him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm too scared to hit Oh, come you. on, hit me. I'm worried your teeth are going to fly out. <laughs> These are genuine teeth. Oh, I don't have any ones. Duff, duff, duff. That's that, duff, duff, duff. Oh, I'm joking. Oh, are you ready? Duff, duff, yeah, give me a snap. No, don't. I'm scared. Don't look. Because I feel really bad. <laughs> no, no, it was it no. was like a feather. Well, listen. Good. Oh. Can I know if there's it ringing? You know that ringing in me. But when Superman knew there was trouble. <laughs> yeah. And uh, good luck with East End. Thank you, uh, I think you'll be absolutely brilliant. Don't you think Thank you'll you. be brilliant in it? When, are you gonna, when, when can we see you actually on the TV screen? OK, so it's April the 9th. April the, the 9th episode, is when yeah. you're making your debut. Fantastic. Give it up for Denise Van Owen, everyone! <laughs> anyway, Denise, yes. let, yeah, now you're a football fan, <laughs> aren't you? I do, yeah, I like to go Who to matches. Support? Chelsea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been to a few matches. Is there anything you'd like to say to him as a Chelsea fan? <laughs> Uh, disappointed. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I do like Chelsea. Do you know what? It's really hard for me because all my family are West Ham supporters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Up so the Amers, up the Amers. So I should really support West Ham, but I think I always say if it's the first match that you've been to and the first match I went to see was Chelsea. Yeah. So. <laughs> now, did you know this? Noel, actually, you played football, didn't you? Um, I did play, yeah, when I was younger, but, you know, nothing. I don't want to... I sound <laughs> ridiculous in front of Frank saying that. Same. I used to play when I was younger. I still play now. I've got a Sunday league team um, uh, with my mates with every Sunday, five aside. What position do you play then, Bizzle? Uh, I'm a left winger. I'm left-footed, naturally. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty quick as well. So, yeah, pretty yeah. dangerous. Oh. Are you? Sign me up, sign me up. You are bigging yourself up. I know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a deal. Of a former <laughs> England captain. I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you may have won pretty much everything there is to win in football, and early on I offered you the chance to play against me for the one trophy you haven't won. It's the Alan Carr Chatting Man Cup, <laughs> and it's the penalty shootout challenge. Are you all up for it? Oh, I'm yes. down for that. Yes, so, yeah. do you reckon you four against me? Yep. Do you think you could take me? Definitely. <laughs> right, let's do this. Come on, let's. <laughs> Bring it up. Hope I don't fall over. I've got high heels on. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> Come on then, Bissell. Bring it on. Give it your best shot. Come on. <laughs> Not the face, not the face is my work. <laughs> Go on, you can do it. Oh. Now you're back. Oh. Ah. Loser! Loser! Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> Whatever. Still got the match. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. 
I'll let you have that one. <laughs> Who's going to get in goal? Who's oh. going to get in goal? Yeah, go for it. Right, come on then. Two to beat, two to beat. Yeah, thanks, love. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you want me to take your gloves? <laughs> pull, pull me glove. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, love. <laughs> yeah! Come on, then. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> okay, what's that one? Keep it dignified. <laughs> oh, that was a value. I've never been a success at sport. <laughs> That's it for tonight's show! Matthew Davis in the old building, Denise Manara, Lee Paul Bitter, and of course, Frank Lambert.